in the previous videos we discuss extensively the plot of the play we discuss it at by at at one at two at three at four and at five we discuss that in the first video and we talk about the plot summary and analysis of the play and how the play began and ended with King Lear regretting. Then in the second video, we discuss extensively the themes in the play. We have discussed a lot of things, appearance and reality, theme of compassion, theme of death, theme of uh, pretense and several other things have been discussed in the previous video. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the characters and the roles that each character play in the play King Lear by William Shakespeare. So uh, it is important that you subscribe to the channel so that you will be updated, notified when new video is uploaded. We are going to be discussing the literary devices used in the play in another video. So make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will be notified when the new video is uh, uploaded. So let's look at the characters one after another. We have the character of King Lear, who is the king of Britain. And uh, one of the king that took a very rash and irrational decision by sharing his kingdom for his two daughters, Guneri and Regan, and disinherited the youngest daughter, Cordelia, because she believes that Cordelia did not lose him by refusing to profess her love for him when Cordelia told him that uh, the love she has for the father cannot be expressed by word. So, King Lear is a major character in the play. He is the tragic hero and according to Shakespearean play, a tragic hero must have tragic flaws, Hamashia, that will lead to his downfall. So what led to the downfall of King Lear in the play, King Lear, is his decision to divide his kingdom for the two daughters, who he assumed loves him. And we saw that he was maltreated by the two daughters, and then he lived his life in regret. Not just regret, regret to the end of it because the daughter he developed love for later, that is Cordelia, when he realized that Cordelia actually loves him, at the end of the play, he heard the dead body of that Cordelia because Cordelia was executed by the army of Albany who defeated the army of France. So King Lear is um, a very good king that um, I can say is irrational in decision. And because he also banished Kent for, so, for supporting uh, Cordelia, he banished Kent from the kingdom. So he banished both Kent and Cordelia from the kingdom. So he's somebody that took decisions before he thinks. So when he took decision and later think twice on it, he will be full of regret. So we can see that um, he is uh, a good character uh, as, as the extent of uh, being a tragic hero. Then let's look at another character, Cordelia. One of the characters that I so much love in this play is Cordelia. Because Cordelia is a very sincere character. A character that expresses sincerity and honesty in every form. She loves, she loves the father sincerely, but does not want to express it using words because the love she has for the father is beyond what word can define, what word can describe. And at the same time, he can say that Cordelia is wife of King of France. Because when the father disinherited her and banished her, the king of France married her. And she was living well with the king of France. She's a lady that is very compassionate 
I'm very concerned about family affair. And that was why even after being disinherited, she's still concerned about the father and led the army of France to fight against the two daughters, Guneri and Regan, so that the father will reclaim the kingdom. Oh, it's a good woman, a very good character in the play. Then we have Edmund, a very controversial and complex character in the play. His significance shows that uh, uh, what he does, especially he mischiefs, he, he deceives the father to believe that Edgar, the legitimate son, uh, fought against the father and then the father disinherited Edgar. It's a very mischievous character in the play and that is why his betrayal against the system is not just against the existing system but also against the social fabric in the Kingdom of Britain at that time. So he, Edmund, desires the status equal to that of Edgar. And uh, that because Edgar is the legitimate son of Gloucester. So he uses cunning and scheme and spiritual assistance to make sure the father loves him and banish Edgar away. And we saw that uh, Edmund later got married or uh, got engaged in relationship with her uh, uh, Goneri at the end of the play. So we saw that Edgar also killed Edmund at the end of the play also. Um, let's look at Goneri. Goneri is the eldest daughter of King Lear and he pretended that she lost King Lear severely and after getting the shell of the kingdom he showed her true color by maltreating the father does not want the father to to enjoy her his status as a king so despite being married to a duke she developed an illicit love for another man called edmund the son of Gloucester, the illegitimate son of Gloucester, and then coerces him to slay her husband so that she could fulfill her desire of marrying him. So we saw that he was the she she was the one who masterminded Edmund to kill her own husband, Duke, and then she committed suicide later. So it's a very a villain in the play bad character. Then let's look at Regan. Regan is the second daughter of King Lear. Despite her sympathetic and reasonable appearance during Edgar's infidelity, she showed deceptiveness and yet remained polite as she welcomed her father. She does not love the father also. She pretended that she loves the father and after getting her own inheritance, do not care much about the father again. Then she crosses the boundaries of indecency when she plucked the head of Gloucester and finally succumbed to the public pressure, relieving Gloucester from misery. You no, know, she's also very wicked. Gloucester, she was the one who plucked her, the eyes of Gloucester away. Then let's look at another character, Gloucester, an heir. And Gloucester is blinded by his illegitimate son, Edmund, who lies against the legitimate son, Edgar. He is kept out of the loop until Cornwall really blinds him and makes him incapacitated for life. So he is also a lazy character in the play, in the sense that he paid much attention to what the son, Edmund, told him, than rather finding out the true situation of things than rather investigating whether Edgar actually did what Edmund said about him. Then we have the fool or the court jester. He's also a major character in the play. The character of the fool is significant in that when Cordelia faces exile, he provides shelter to King Lear. He is also a lawyer and also an honest fellow who supports King Lear in his misery. 
in his challenges. So the full sarcastic comment helped King Lear to see beneath the surface of things and makes him a bit tolerant. So as a character, the fool seems that uh, he works as a chorus in the Greek play. So we have Edgar, the legitimate son of Gloucester who was banished when Edmund schemed him out, lied against him. So Edgar was part of the army that fought against Albany and at the end of the play, by the end of the play, he is left with Albany to rule the kingdom because Edmund also has been killed by Edgar. We have Kent. Kent is also a character who become very significant. Why? Because he speak the truth. He condemned King Lear for banishing Cordelia. And then King Lear also decided to banish him out of the kingdom. So later he returned as Caius to advise King Lear about other issues. However, when the right moment comes, he reveal his identity, his true identity, and uh, he told King Lear that he was the Kent that was banished. So he came with the name Caius. So he is a honest man, a very good man. His goodness and greatness come in front when, by the end, he gets an invitation to have a share in the kingdom, but he declines. So we have Albani, who is the husband of Guneri, and slow in learning things about himself. And Bani finds himself in a good position at the end of the play when he sees that things have automatically cleared for him to rule the kingdom. After the death of Goneri, he automatically rules the kingdom. So these are the 10 characters we will be discussing or we have discussed in this video. The literary devices used in the play we will discuss it in the next video. So make sure you subscribe so that uh, and also click the notification bell so that you will be notified when the new video is uploaded. Thank you.